January 14th, NBA action and fantasy basketball analysts. The Philadelphia 76ers with a big win here, 125-108 under the undermanned Heat team. So the Sixers now have beat the Heat two times in a row. And Shake Milton, he came back in this game with a huge one here for Philly to lead him to victory. But to the Heat side of things, Achukawora, a good ball game again in this one. And he was a recommended pickup the last couple days with all the guys out for the protocol here for the Miami Heat, and he had 10 points, 11 rebounds, 2 assists on 4 or 6 shooting from the field. So, he's definitely worth an ad here until Bam Adebayo comes back or whoever else for this Miami Heat team. But the rookie, he's putting up impressive numbers, and he's a player you definitely could target and stream for the next couple days till guys come back from injury. The next guy, Tyler Hero, 31 minutes to play. 17 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists on 7 of 16 shooting from the field. Then he added a 3 in 2 attempts with Tyler Hero. So Hero, he's going to have a more usage now until Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and Avery Bradley come back for this Miami Heat team. And Hero, he steps up to the challenges. Last season, we saw him get all that postseason experience. So Tyler Hero, he's been good since his rookie year last year. And now we'll see if he can take the next step in the next few games with these guys out. And Hero, he had a 34-point game the other night. And this one, his shooting percentage was still decent, but he was just a little off. And Miami, it was a tough game for him versus a good Philly team. Gabe Vincent, another good game for the youngster here. 21 points, 2 rebounds, 8 assists, and 34 minutes of play. So the Miami Heat, they might have found some role players with these protocols and these guys being out in Vincent and Archer Woodward. They're contributing. They're making some plays and they're putting up some decent stats in the first two games. These guys have played big minutes since those guys have gone out on the injured list. And Gabe Vincent, another guy I would pick up in leagues until Jimmy Butler comes back, Drogic, and Avery Bradley. Because he's going to get a lot of minutes like we've been seeing. And he's been producing 21-8-8. and is a great game in this one for Gabe Vincent. Duncan Robinson, 22 minutes of play, two points, an assist, nine of 14 from the field, and four for eight from downtown. So, Duncan Robinson, he's a good shooter, he's a good player. He's been in a slump so far in the early going of the season, but I think he could get it going now. And he's going to be a main part of this offense even more in the next couple games. Kelly Olinick, another decent game for him. 38 minutes of play, 12.6 rebounds, 4 assists, 5 of 13 from the field, and 1 of 7 from downtown. So Link, he has a good role on this team, no matter what, with these guys out or coming back to play. And Olenek, he was a recommended ad this week on waivers. So if you didn't see that sentence video, go check it out. Olenek, he could hit threes, he could rebound for a big man. And he's getting all the opportunity here. And this was another decent game for him. And he got a huge playing time, 38 minutes. Struss in this one, 27 minutes, 11.7 rebounds, a decent line. But he don't really have fantasy value unless you're in the deepest of leagues. Andre Iguodala, 25 minutes, 2 points, 3 rebounds, 8 assists. He's just not doing much for fantasy owners. He's a better real-life player than a fantasy player. And Silver in this one, 13 points, 4 rebounds, 4 or 6 from the field. 5 or 6 from the foul line. And Silva, decent stat line, but another guy only in the deepest of leagues for now. You could go out there and get him. And the other guy's injured. Drogic, Myers, Leonard's out, Bam Adebayo, Bradley, and Jimmy Butler all in the protocol. So hopefully these guys could get cleared and come back by the weekend or early next week for the Miami Heat. Now to the Philadelphia 76er side of things. Joel Embiid, he had a down game for once in this one. 23 minutes, 9 points, 5 rebounds, 3 of 8 from the field. And Embiid, maybe he's not 100% recovered from the injury that he came back possibly a little early from. But Embiid the other night with a big 45-16 and 16 game. So I don't know what it is. Maybe he was off who had injury. But Joel Embiid, I'm not going to be concerned with him unless he's going to be out, obviously, a long period of time with an injury because this season he's ranked third in fantasy basketball and this was just a little blimp on the radar with a bad game for him. Danny Green, another decent performance, 
25 minutes of play, 12 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists for Danny Green, and 4 of 8 from shooting from the field, and 4 for 7 from downtown. So Danny Green, he's a player that should be owned in probably 14-team leagues or deeper because there's some nights he's going to go off and some other nights where he's going to be bad. And on this night, it was a mediocre game for Green. He's not doing much in other categories. You know he's a three-point shooter. You know he could score the basketball here and there. But he's a player I would stay away from if I could. Tobias Harris, he came back in this one off the protocol. And Philly, they're starting to get healthy now on their roster. So guys like Isaiah Joe, Tony Bradley, they're definitely droppable on this team now. With Harris back and Shake Milton and even... In this one, Tyrese Maxey, his minutes got cut down just a bit, even though he got the start. But once Seth Curry comes back, he'll take a hit as well. But Tobias Harris, he came back and he did what he does. He's scoring the basketball. 18 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 of 4 from 3, 7 of 13 from the field. So Harris, you know what you're going to get from him. Good scoring, a few rebounds here and there, and a couple threes. And it's good to see him back. Ben Simmons, he had the old Jason Kidd. Type of triple-double in this one. 10 points, 10 rebounds, 12 assists. And Simmons, he was happy he wasn't traded to the Houston Rockets in the James Harden deal. He wants to prove people wrong. He wants to be here in Philly. And right here, a nice triple-double game for him. But the only concerning thing for Simmons, in my opinion, his scoring is still down a lot this season. And he's barely cracking double-digit points per game with this Philly team. But he's still rebounding. He's still assisting the ball. He's a bad jump shooter, we know, and foul shooter. But in this game, one, he actually shot two for two from the line with Simmons. So that was good to see. And he also came back from his little nagging injury. Tyrese Maxey, he started 25 minutes, 15 points, a rebound and assist, 6 of 10 from the field, and 2 of 2 from the line, and 1 for 3 from three-point land. So Maxey, we know he's a high-touted prospect. Philly, they didn't want to give him up. In the Harden deal as well. And I think Philly's better off here. They got their nucleus. They got a good bench on this team. And now that the Harden deal is over. They can focus and play better. And that's what they did in this ball game here tonight. They made plays. These guys contribute. And Maxi, he's going to have some fantasy value. But the only thing that worries me is when Seth Curry comes back. If he's going to still contribute and be part of this Philadelphia 76 or rotation which he should be. Shake Milton, welcome back. And he had a big ball game in this one. 31 points, 2 rebounds, 7 assists, 11 of 15 from the field, and 3 for 4 from downtown. So Milton, he's really taking on that six-man role here for this Philly team. And he's been going off with some huge games of late and another one here in his return. So Milton, he should be owned in all 10 and 12-team leagues because he puts up numbers. He's the six-man here for Philly, and he's a guy you could believe in. Dwight Howard, back to the bench, 22 minutes, 8 points, 4 rebounds, 2 for 2 from the field. Howard, he has no fantasy value unless a big injury happens to Embiid or someone else here. Isaiah Joe, 19 minutes, 12 points, 4 of 8 shooting. No other stats for Joe, and Joe, he's been decent so far the last few games, but now with Maxi Milton, And Tobias Harris all ahead of him. He could be dropped once again in fantasy leagues. Thigh ball, 17 minutes, 8 points, and a rebound. The young thigh ball, they're big on this kid, but they got a lot of guard depth. I'm surprised they they were not willing to really deal him, according to reports, in the Harden deal. But now that that's over, he's here in Philly, but he has no fantasy value at this time. So that was the Miami Heat. At the Philadelphia 76ers Fantasy Basketball and NBA Recap. The Raptors and the Charlotte Hornets here. The Raptors get a surprising victory in this one. Considering the struggles that have happened this season for Toronto. They win 111-108. And they improve to 3-8 and eight on the season. And the Hornets fall to 6-7 and seven in the early going. For the Hornets, Bismack Bayumbo, 10 points, 8 rebounds and assists, 5 of 8 from the field. So Bayumbo, he's just playing about 20, 25 minutes a game here for this Hornet team. And he's not really putting up huge numbers. He started off good when he filled in for Zella, who has the fractured hand. But Bayumbo, he's just not producing much. And he's a guy only for deeper fantasy leagues. He's recommended to that. He's going to play, but there's many nights where he don't really fill up 
the stat sheet. P.J. Washington, he's been on a good roll this week. 20 points, 11 rebounds, and assist. A 7 from 14 from the field and 1 for 3 from downtown. So it was good to see Washington have another good game in this one. He was drafted in the later rounds of fantasy drafts. And he's paying off for the most part. He's putting up stats. He's producing. And he's a good ball player, is Washington. And no one is a threat to his role on this Hornet team. So he's a guy you definitely ride out with here in your fantasy leagues and on your teams. Martin, he got the spot start for Gordon Hayward. And Hayward, I told you so. I hate to say it, but now the injuries are starting to catch up. He missed this ball game with a left hip strain. So we'll see how long he's out. And Martin, he didn't do much in the fill-in game here for Hayward. 5.6 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 of 7 from the field. So let's say Hayward's out a week or two or more. I still don't think Martin has enough fantasy value for 10 or 12 team leagues. Devonta Graham in this one, struggling once again from the field. 5 of 15 from the field. 5 for 12 from 3. For He finished with 15 points. 4 rebounds, 4 assists. And Graham this season, he just hasn't got anything going in this season so far. His shooting percentage is low. His points per game are way down. And I think the addition of LaMelo Ball has definitely been a factor into Graham's struggles this season. Maybe he's pressing too hard. Or maybe last season was just a fluky good year for him. But I don't know what it's been. But Graham, he's been struggling. And so far, kind of a bust in fantasy basketball. Terry Rozier, he had a good one in this one. 22 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, 10 of 16 from the field. And 2 of 4 from downtown. So Rozier, he's a good ball player. He's streaky though. And we've seen times this year... Him explode and then him have horrible games. But right now, he's pretty much even keeled the last few games as Rozier. And he's playing pretty decent for this Hornet team. So he's a guy I would just keep and see what he does for your roster. Miles Bridges, a mediocre line in this one. Him and Ball are the top two guys coming off the bench here for the Hornets. 28 minutes of play, 12 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists, 5 or 7 from the field. And he added two threes and three attempts. So Bridges, 12-team leagues are deeper. He definitely should be owned. If you're in a shallow league and there's better options out there, I think I would drop Bridges because his ceiling ain't that high. He's not starting. He's coming off the bench, and there's a lot of options on this team. And guys who are going to take more shot attempts than Bridges. Plus, he don't give you many other categories where he's great at. LaMelo Ball. Pretty good game for him in this one. 14 points, 6 rebounds, 11 assists, 6 of 14 from the field, and 2 for 5 from downtown. So Ball, he's doing it everything. He's getting two steals a game. His assist numbers have been pretty solid so far this season. And he's getting about 5 or 6 rebounds per game. So LaMelo Ball, he was a highly touted rookie, obviously, from overseas. And this guy, he looks like he's ready for the NBA game. The only thing he has to improve is on shooting the basketball. But as time goes on, I think he'll improve on that and he'll get better. And right now, he's helping fantasy owners with a top 50 ranking so far this season. Malik Monk, he got a surprise in 22 minutes of play. And they needed some scoring off the bench here with Hayward out. And he had 10 points. Three rebounds, three assists in 22 minutes, three or six shooting. So Monkey was a highly touted prospect as well years ago coming out in the NBA draft, but he's been a bust so far. Maybe he could carve a rollout with Hayward out right now, but right now he's not a guy to look at in fantasy. Now to the Toronto side of things, Aaron Baines, he got a start, seven minutes, two points, one rebound. The true centers on this Toronto Raptors offense and team, they don't have any fantasy values. Alex Lynn and Baines, so they should be on the wire. OG Abinubi, good ball game in this one. 13 points, 5 boards, 2 assists, 4 for 9 from the field, and 2 for 4 from 3 for OG. So OG, he's been pretty decent this year. Toronto, they started him, they believe in him. And they gave him a little bit of an extension as well in the offseason. And so far, so good for Obanobi. But I'm not expecting a crazy breakout season for him. More numbers like this, mediocre to decent numbers, I think he could put up this season. But he's still the third or fourth scoring option 
on this Raptor team. Pascal Siakam, a decent game in this one. 15 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, 6 of 15 from the field, and 2 for 6 from downtown. So Siakam, he's been pretty solid so far this season. Hopefully he learned his lesson not to walk off the court earlier than the game ends. But right here, it was a good game. You like to see it from Siakam, and hopefully he could build off it and his points per game could go back up in the next one. Red Van Fleet, his shooting percentage has dropped now in the last week or two, and his points per game as well. He's in a shooting slump. But I think Van Fleet, he was shooting over his head anyway, and he's a three-point jacker. Is Van Vliet 15 shot attempts from deep in this one. And he went 5 for 15 from 3. He's throwing up a lot of 3s and jump shots. It was good to see him have 8 assists in this one. But right now he's hurting your field goal percentage. And his points per game have dropped over the last week or two. And it don't surprise me. I don't think he was going to sustain 23, 24 points per game this season. Kyle Lowry, a great game for him in this one. 16 points, 6 rebounds. 12 assists, 6 of 10 from the field, and 4 for 5 from downtown for Lowry. So the veteran, the only concerning thing for me with him, he's playing big minutes, and I don't know if he's going to hold up with all that wear and tear on his body and under his belt over the years, but he's been good for fantasy owners. He went in the middle rounds of most drafts, and he's definitely playing up to that or even better than where he was drafted in most leagues. And Chris Booker, another huge game for him. 25 points, 10 boards, 2 assists, 8 of 12 from the field, and 2 for 4 from downtown. So Booker, he's been playing real good. He's a player I said to sell high, but right now, if you're not going to get great value for him, you obviously keep him because he's breaking out this season. Toronto believed in him. They gave him the contract extension, and he's paying big dividends for fantasy owners and the Raptors right now with these huge double-doubles and these big block games too that he's adding. Stanley Johnson, 20 minutes, 6 points, 1 rebound, 3 assists. No way he's on the radar. No, Norman Powell, he's been decent. He was a recommended ad this week, but right now his playing time has gone down the last few games. 11 points, 5 rebounds, and assist. So if you want to drop Powell for a better option, I wouldn't blame you because right now he's not playing as much as you thought he would. So that was the Charlotte Hornets at the Toronto Raptors. Fantasy basketball and NBA the Rockets and the San Antonio Spurs here. The Rockets get the win first game post James Harden era with a 109-105 victory. And it's a good road victory here for Houston. They're moving on, obviously, after the huge trade. And they got a lot in return for Harden. Victor Oladipo, four first-round picks and four pick swaps. But obviously in this one, Oladipo, he wasn't ready to go. In this one, but Christian Wood was, and he had a 27 point, 15 rebound game, an assist 10 of 18 from the field, and 5 for 7 from downtown. So, Christian Wood now, we're hard and out of town. I think his stats are going to be crazy good. He's picked up right where he left off last season, was Wood, putting up huge numbers even then last year, and the 15 rebounds is big. The 27 points, he hit five threes, and this Houston team, I think they're going to have a chip on their shoulder. And they're going to try to prove James Harden obviously wrong and all of the NBA that they could have a good season without him. And on this night, they did behind Christian Wood. And Wood right now, he got drafted in about the 6th to 7th round of fantasy leagues. But he's top 50 in fantasy basketball rankings. And his numbers should just go up more now with Harden out of town. Ben McLemore, he got the start at point guard. Three points, three rebounds, four assists, one of six from the field, and one for five from downtown. So McLemore, he don't, he's not going to have fantasy value. John Wall, he was out in this one with the left knee soreness, and Eric Gordon with the tightness. So even in an expanded role for McLemore, he didn't do much. Brown in this one, he had a good ball game. 23 points, seven rebounds, three assists, nine of 17 from the field, and three for seven from downtown. So either him or Tate are going to start. And obviously, one will go to the bench once all the depot gets over here to this Houston Rocket lineup, unless they want depot off the bench. But I can't see that to happen. But anyway, Brown, it was a good game. He's a player to keep an eye on. But we got to see what his playing time is going to be and stuff once this trade is all sorted out. And these guys report to their teams the rookie Tate that James Harden punched in the face in training camp. 
He had a good ball game in this one. 13 points, 5 rebounds, 10 assists, 6 of 12 from the field, and 0 for 1 from 3. So Tate, he's been playing pretty good so far in his rookie year. He's shown some flashes, but right now he's a player more for dynasty or keeper leagues, unless he's going to carve out a role now after this trade and all the smoke settled. We'll see what he could do. P.J. Tucker, 35 minutes of play, 10 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists. 3 for 4 from the field and 2 for 2 from 3. So Tucker here, there's been rumblings now that the Minnesota Timberwolves and Rockets might have some trade talks about Tucker going there. But Tucker, he's still in that fantasy value in my opinion, even though this was one of his better scoring games this season. And he only had 10 points. So Tucker, we'll see what he could do as the weeks go on. But right now, he's not going to have value at this time. The Waba... 9 points, 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 4 of 8 from the field, and 0 for 2 from downtown. So, Nwaba, I don't think he has fantasy value. This trade doesn't help him at all. If anyone's going to benefit from the trade, it's going to be Brown and Tate, obviously, and probably Eric Gordon, but he was out in this game. The Marcus Cousins, he played 18 minutes, 9 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, and he struggled from the field. Two for eight from the field, and they were all three-point attempts. So the Marcus Cousins, he thinks he's going to be a stretch five now. Maybe he could be, maybe not. But I want to see him in the post more and putting the basketball back in on some rebounds and stuff. But Cousins in this one, he struggled. And in ten, eight or ten team leagues, he's probably cuttable. But 12 teams are deeper. You hold on to Cousins. Eric Gordon, like I said, he was out in this one with the lower leg tightness so hopefully he's day-to-day -day because I think his impact and value goes up here with this trade and also John Wall obviously he was saying all that about Harden giving up and now Wall that knee got up on him here and the knee soreness so John Wall he was out and hopefully he's only day-to-day -to, -day. to the Spurs side of things LaMarcus Aldridge an off game here, 11 points, 2 rebounds, and an assist, 1 of 6 from 3. So Aldridge, this is what's going to happen some nights for the veteran big man. He's just not going to have it, and he's going to have an off game. And that's what happened here tonight. But Aldridge, he's been pretty good this season. And he's a player that could be good the rest of the way. He's not going to be Aldridge like he was in Portland, but he still could help fantasy teams. And definitely this Spur team, Keldon Johnson... They're high on him, like I said. They're going to give him every opportunity. And he's going to have some down games and some great games. And here tonight, he had a great one. 29 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, 12 of 16 from the field here for Johnson. 2 for 3 from downtown. So Johnson, like I said, the Spurs like him a lot. He's getting the opportunities. And he's a player that should pretty much be owned in all fantasy leagues. Because he's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. And no one on this roster is going to take the minutes from him. And he's got great potential as Johnson, especially after games like this. DeMar DeRozan, he returned in this one. 34 minutes, 13 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists for DeRozan, 5 of 14 from the field. So DeRozan this season, his assists per game have gone up. His rebounding's been pretty solid, and his points per game, they were a little higher the first few weeks of the season, but now... The last couple games that he did play, even though he just came back again from uh, the DNPs, was the Rosen. He was at 20 points a game about, but now I think he's going to level out at about 15, 16 points a game. And he still can contribute to your fantasy teams, but he's not going to help in three-point shooting. His field goal, I don't think, is going to be great. And I don't know if he could sustain six or seven assists per game. DeJounte Murray in this one, 10 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists, 5 of 12 from the field. So Murray, he's the main man here. Derek White, I keep repeating myself, is going to be out 4 to 6 weeks. And Murray, he's got the keys to the starting lineup at the point guard position. Tonight, he was off a little with his scoring. But he's going to be fine as Murray and play better this season. And he, so far, has been worth his ranking going into fantasy drafts where he went 6th or 7th round. And he's going to be good. Lonnie Walker, he's been emerging this season here for this Spur team. 16 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, 4 or 7 from downtown. 
and 6 of 14 from the field. The Spurs, if they know one thing, that's how to develop players in the last few seasons. Walker, he didn't play much for this Spur team. He was learning and watching on the bench. And now Walker, he's been starting and playing a lot this season. And he's producing. And in deeper leagues, he should be picked up and played on fantasy teams. Because he's getting 25-30 minutes a game. I don't think Patty Mills is going to be a factor into eating into Walker's minutes. Even though Mills did play 27 minutes in this game. But Walker, he's the better fantasy player. He's the better ball player. In my opinion, Patty Mills, he serves well off the bench better than in the lineup. Mills, 27 minutes, 7 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists for Mills. He don't have fantasy value. He's going to be too up and down. And he don't do one thing great to be owned in fantasy right now. Unless you're in 18-team league or something. Vaso in this one, 22 minutes, 12 points, 3 rebounds and assists. 4 or 6 from the field. And one for three from downtown for Vasso. But at this time, he don't have value. And Rudy Gay, he had an off game. 17 minutes, five points, five rebounds. Two for seven from the field. One for one from the line. So Gay, he's probably droppable now in 10 to 12 team leagues. I would add him in 14 team leagues or deeper. And that was the Houston Rocket at the San Antonio Spurs. Fantasy basketball and NBA recap. Paces. What a huge victory over the Portland Trailblazers in a blowout win, 111-87. And is a bonus with another huge game to lead the Pacers to victory with 23 points and 15 rebounds. Miles Turner, 11 points, 10 rebounds in 37 minutes of play, 4 of 14 from the field, 0 for 5 from 3. So this season, Turner, he's ranked 8th in fantasy basketball, but he's averaging 4 blocks a game, which is really pumping his value up. And in this one, his scoring went down. His previous game, he had 22 points, but he still finished the day with 10 rebounds. But Miles Turner, I recommended to try to sell him high this week because I don't think he's going to keep up these shot blocking numbers. And his points per game this season hasn't really been impressive, even though he had a big game the other night. I still would try to sell him high. Malcolm Brogdon, another good game for him. And what a season it's been for Brogdon. He's top 10 so far. In rankings in fantasy basketball, 25 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists, 10 of 18 from the field, and 3 for 6 from downtown. Brogdon, I recommended to sell him high as well. I don't think he's going to sustain it as well. He's averaging 24 points a game this season, and I think that's just a little bit too high here for Brogdon. Now with Karis Levert coming into town, that's another big scorer. You're adding to this Indiana team, and obviously he plays the same positions as Brogdon as a point guard or a combo guard. So we'll see in the next few days how this shakes out for this Indiana team and what kind of impact Levert's going to have here. Zabonis, what a monster he's been, man. 23 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists, 10 of 18 from the field, and 3 for 4 from the line for Zabonis. 0 for 2 from 3. He's been a fantasy animal. Indiana, they gave him a huge contract for a reason. And right now, he's putting up big double-doubles each and every game, it seems like, for Zabonis. And this Pacer team, they're very talented. They're 8-4 for a reason. And Zabonis, he's leading the charge. Justin Holiday, decent game in this one. 25 minutes of play, 11 points, 3 rebounds, and an assist. 4 or 6 from the field. And 3 for 4 from downtown. So Holiday, he was a recommended pickup this week. He's going to help you in 3-pointers. He'll get you a few rebounds. And he'll get 12 to 15 points per game on most nights. Summer, he got another start in this one. But he has no fantasy value. And now with Karis LeVert in town, he'll probably go to the bench. And I could see LeVert starting at the shooting guard position. Unless they want to just bring him off the bench here. But Sumner... He shouldn't be owned in any fantasy leagues. Doug McDermott, another decent game here. 16 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 6 of 14 from the field. And 1 for 6 from downtown for Dougie Buckets. But Buckets, he's not a consistent ball player. He's pretty much a one-trick pony where he'll only help you in 3-point shooting and scoring. And most nights, he don't deliver enough to do that for fantasy rosters. Aaron Holiday, 21 minutes of play, 6 points. A rebound, three assists, three for six from the field. He's not going to have value. TJ McConnell, he finally came back. Four points, five rebounds, eight assists. McConnell, he's a solid role player 
but he's not going to be a player you want on your fantasy team. And the last thing here, Jeremy Lamb, he's rehabbing, and he's back to practice now with the torn ACL, so maybe we'll see him by the end of the month or earlier. So he's a guy to keep an eye on, but right now I wouldn't rush to the wire and pick him up even if I have injured spots. Now to Portland, Joseph Nurkic, a nasty wrist injury. He fell hard on it, and he broke it, and now we don't know how long Nurkic's going to be out. Five points, eight rebounds, two assists, and Nurkic, he was struggling to start the season. And now with this injury, it's a huge blow for him. And the ben the fantasy beneficiaries out of this is Ennis Cantor and Harry Giles Jr. for this Portland Trailblazer team. Cantor this season, he's been the better center anyway for Nurkic. So Nurkic's done. We'll probably expect to see him out in four to six weeks, maybe longer. So Cantor and Giles in deeper leagues are the pickups here, even though Cantor, he's owned in about 50% of fantasy leagues. Now, he should be owned pretty much universal, and it's a tough blow for Nurkic. Robert Covington, just when I thought he was going to break out of the slump, the struggles continue once again here. Three points, one rebound, one assist, one or seven from the field, and one for five from downtown. So Covington... He's just not getting it going right now, and he's a player that's pretty much almost droppable indefinitely in 18 leagues and possibly in 10 team leagues. The production's not there. He's not giving you anything really in other categories besides points, and it's been a tough go so far. Maybe this injury will help him out, but who knows? It's way to be seen here with Covington. Damian Lillard, after that huge 40 point game, he called, cooled off just a bit in this one with 22 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 7 of 16 from the field, and 2 for 5 from downtown. You know what you're going to get from Lillard. He's a beast for a reason and a fantasy stud, and he still had a decent game for his standards with the 22. And you know he could drop 40 on every any night. Derek Jones is junior, 21 minutes, 9 points, 6 rebounds, 4 for 4 from the field. But like I always say, he's better for real life than fantasy, and he don't have value unless you're in a 16-team league. C.J. McCollum, another solid game, 22 points, 3 boards, 4 assists, 8 of 18 from the field, and 4 for 10 from downtown. So McCollum, he's having a magical season so far here for fantasy owners and the Portland Trailblazers, and hopefully his play could get his team over the hump this year, but I doubt it with the Lakers. And the clip is here in the Western Conference, but McCollum, he's playing well, and he's a guy that every season, it seems like he improves on a few things with his game, and this season, it's been his passing, it's been his efficiency from downtown, his percentage has gone way up so far, and he's an absolute stud. Gary Trent in this one, 24 minutes, 7 points, 1 assist, 3 for 9 from the field, and Trent in deeper leagues, I would pick him up right now, he's just not consistent enough. To own in 10 to 12 team weeks. Carmelo Anthony, 10 points, 2 rebounds, and an assist in 21 minutes. 4 for 11 from the field for Melo, and 2 for 5 from downtown. So Melo, he probably has better value in deep 12 team leagues of 14, where he'll help you in scoring, rebounding, and add about two threes a game. And his Cantor, he's going to be the man now at center here for Portland. And only in 15 minutes, he still had 4 points, 9 rebounds. Two assists, one of four from the field. So Ennis, he'll probably play anywhere from 20 to 5 to 30 minutes permanently with Nurkic out with a bad wrist injury, which is a bad blow for Nurkic, who once again is hurt, and obviously this Portland team. But I think Cantor and Giles could get things going. Now on to Giles. He played 11 minutes, 2.5 rebounds, one for three from the field. So Giles, in deeper leagues, you could add him. Or 12-team leagues, I think he's worth an add. Because he's still going to play probably 15 to 20 minutes. And he's a youngster that could get things going. And Sacramento, they might have just gave up on him earlier. But we saw Giles in the preseason have a couple big games. So this kid, he's definitely got potential. Rodney Hood, 10 minutes. He's not playing enough. And that was the Indiana Pacers at the Portland Trailblazers. Fantasy basketball and NBA Nuggets and the Golden State Warriors. What a good game this was here. And the Nuggets take the victory 114-106. And the Nuggets improve to 6-6 six and six on the season. And the Warriors drop to 6-6. Six and six. So both teams here with the same record. Nikola Jokic, another big game to lead his team. 
Now to the Golden State side of things. 18 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists for James Wiseman. And Wiseman, he's been solid so far here in the early going for this rookie. He's a player I said should be owned in most 10 to 12 team fantasy leagues. He's going to get points. He's going to rebound the basketball. And he's going to be a good shot blocker as well for Wiseman. And obviously, I don't think he's even reached... His potential at all is Wiseman, so he's definitely a player that so far he's been good in fantasy basketball, and hopefully it continues. Steph Curry, another big game for him, 35 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 for 23, 14 for 23 from the field, 2 for 2 from the line, and he added 5-3, so the chef, he's cooking this season. It's a big season for him. As the main man now, without his splash brother, Clay Thompson, so Curry, his usage has gone way up, and he's been living up to that top five pick in most fantasy leagues so far this season, and I don't see Curry slowing down. He's got a lot of 30-plus games this season, and obviously dropping a 62-point game a few weeks ago, so he's a stud. Kelly Oubre, another struggling game from the field for him, and 14 points. Five rebounds, two assists, three of ten from the field, and three for eight downtown, 30 minutes of play. So Oubre, he's been in a slump just about all season, but he's a player I won't give up on yet. He's still scoring the basketball about 13, 14 points a game. He's rebounding, and then he's helping in other categories. So if he could just get his confidence back and his shooting down, Kelly Oubre, he's going to be fine for fantasy owners, and he's going to contribute for this Warrior team. Andrew Wiggins... 16 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, and 35 minutes of play for Wiggins. 7 of 16 from the field and 2 for 2 from the line. So Wiggins, you know what you're going to get from him. He could score the basketball. His shooting percentage isn't going to be all that great, but he was almost 50% in this one. And his assists have been decent so far this season. So right now, he's probably the second or third option in my opinion here. For this Warrior team, and we'll see what he could do as the games go on. Draymond Green, another bad performance for the most part. 1.4 rebound, 7 assists. So Green, he's passing the ball better. He had a triple-double, I know, a few games ago, but he's frustrating to own. He's not doing much for fantasy owners. And right now, he's a big bust, I believe, early in the season here for fantasy basketball and the Warriors. Eric Bosco, he came back in this one and had a bad game according to his standards. Eight points, five rebounds, two of nine shooting. Pasco, he was a recommended ad this week at the center position and forward position coming off the bench. It was one off game for him, but he's still the sixth man here for this Warrior team, and I think he'll be fine, and he should be owned in all 12 team leagues or deeper. Damian Lee, 18 minutes, two points, two rebounds, five assists, no value. Wanna make a 16 minutes. He's not going to have value or base more. There needs to be injuries for these guys to be owned on basic format fantasy teams. Now to Denver, Nikola Jokic, he's a walking triple-double almost for him. And I said this season, I believe he's probably the best big man in fantasy basketball. And right now, he's living up to the bill. 23 points, 14 rebounds, 10 assists. 8-16 from the field for the Joker. So this guy, he could be in the MVP running when the season's over if he's going to continue to put big stat lines up and help this Denver team make the playoffs and have a higher seed. So he's a stud. You know what you're going to get from him. And now he's getting triple doubles all of a sudden. It's sky the limit here for the Joker. And he's a fantasy monster. Boy, boy, got another start in this one. Four points. One rebound, two for four from the field. He's not going to hold value. He's just a guy getting minutes right now. But he needs a lot of development and playing time to get better. Paul Millsap, a mediocre game. 12 points, four rebounds, four assists. Four for seven from the field and two for four from downtown. So Millsap, if you're in a deep league, you hold on to him. But in shallower leagues, you could probably find better options on your waiver wire because he's only rounding out about to nine and ten points a game and four rebounds so the production ain't all that great here for Millsap Jamal Murray he had a pretty decent game just his shooting percentage has been off so far this season and he hasn't had that crazy huge scoring game 17 points nine rebounds six assists six of 18 from the field 
and one for eight from downtown. So Murray, maybe I'm just disappointed in him a little this season after the crazy playoff performances he had in the bubble. But supposedly a lot of players benefited from the bubble and it's an easier gym to shoot. And obviously there were no fans there, so maybe that was part of it. But Jamal Murray, he's a little I'm a little down on him. I thought he would be a better scorer per game so far this season, but he's given you everything else. And he's still a great fantasy player, is Murray. Will Barton, 17 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, 6 of 15 from the field. And 3 for 8 from downtown for Barton. So Barton, he's getting some good playing time. But Michael Porter Jr., hopefully his comeback is right around the corner now. We haven't seen him in 2 or 3 weeks with him quarantining. But Barton, in this night, he took advantage. He's going to help in 3-point shooting and scoring. But I'm not too high on... Barton as well. Monty Morris, 11 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists, 5 for 11 from the field, and 1 for 5 from downtown. So Morris, he could safely be dropped in 10-team leagues or even 12-team leagues. He's not producing enough. I know he's playing big minutes, but he needs an injury to one of these guards or something or a trade for him to get good playing time and have fantasy value in most leagues, Jermichael Green, he was a recommended pickup. And another good game for him, 15 points, 9 rebounds, 5 of 10 from the field, and 3 for 4 from 3 pointers. So he's going to give you points, he's going to give you some rebounds, and he can hit the 3 ball. So I like Jermichael Green for 12-team leagues and deeper, and he can help you at the powered forward and center position. P.J. Dozer, he had a decent game, 22 minutes of play. 10.6 rebounds, but he has no value at this time. Campazzo, 3 points in 12 minutes, but no value. Gary Harris, he missed this game again, and he's banged up. So hopefully him and Porter come back sooner than later. And this was the Golden State Warrior at Denver Nugget Fantasy Basketball and NBA Recap. And that was all the recaps for the January 14th games.